Hello everyone, and my name is Dr. Stephanie West, and today we're going to talk about fluency strategies. So today we are going to talk about these key concepts. Examine the implementation of instructional strategies to build reading fluency skills that are appropriate for the needs of individual students. Analyze assessment data to guide planning and instruction. Use assessment data to design developmentally appropriate learning activities that are aligned to reading standards. So fluency in reading, what really, what does that look like? But let's start here. Dance like nobody's watching and sing like nobody's listening. This advice is true whether we are dancing, singing, swinging at a baseball, or even reading. Conscious attention to the act itself takes concentration away from the purpose of the activity, and it makes our performance stiff, self-conscious, and not very successful. Regarding reading, it has been demonstrated that those who must devote, devote close attention to deciphering words on the page have diminished comprehension. The more they're thinking about pronouncing the words, the less they're thinking about the meaning. So reading fluency has two parts. One, effortless efficiency at word recognition, and two, the ability to render the text expressively so that it sounds like it makes sense. So learning to read. Learning to read fluently can be compared with learning to drive a car. Like effortless driving, fluent reading requires the orchestration of many tasks at once. A beginning driver can only focus on one task at a time, but a seasoned driver can change lanes, obey signals, watch for traffic, and choose which route to take, all while carrying on a conversation or listening to a talk show on the radio, but not texting, we hope. So there's four integrated features that we have to make sure that we integrate it into our fluency instruction. One, accurate word recognition. A fluent reader does not stumble over words, but recognizes all of them automatically. And so be intentional with your word recognition, with your vocabulary instruction. Two, a reasonable rate of reading. Fluent readers read quickly enough to process ideas. That is, they don't read so slowly that they have forgotten the beginning of a sentence by the time they reach the end of it, minus the words read incorrectly. Meaningful grouping of words. This is the third component. Grouping words or chunking is another important aspect of reading fluency. The way we group or chunk words in a sentence can affect the meaning of the sentence. And lastly, fourth, expressive reading. Expressive reading is putting correct emphasis or stress on words and adding expression to the reading so that it sounds like talk, as many of us teachers say. So when you Think about your reading instruction. Make sure these four things are always integrated into the instructional practices. So teaching reading fluency includes six basic e emphasis. These are the six things that really drive fluency home. One, we need to model reading. Teachers demonstrate both fluent and disfluent reading and discuss the differences so that children will know what sort of performance they are aiming for. Two, provide explicit instruction. Teachers should demonstrate, discuss, and provide practice in each of the four features of fluency reading described before. So those four things, explicit instruction in those four components. Three, offer opportunities to read. A goal of teaching should be to give children plenty of opportunities to read, both within and outside of the classroom. Supply appropriate text. Appropriate text will be accessible to every student. Materials that they can read with and without help or with support, depending on that task. They should include a range of genres with a balance between fiction and informational books. And they should include series books or at least books by the same author. By authors, you know, to get them interested in an author and then they, that style of writing. And they'll be able to read that fluently. Guide students' readings. Um, teachers should help students choose books and set goals for their reading. At regular intervals, they should engage them in conversation about what they are reading. They should praise students for the aspects of fluency they are practicing and offer them guidance on the features they need to learn or work on. And this is where we monitor student reading. Monitor reading 
means making sure not only the children are participating in the reading task, but also those tasks require sustained, meaningful reading of text. So a lot of this is like with your guide students reading, track down their interests, you know, and then supply that appropriate text to the interest and to their developmental level. Give them time in class to read and then listen to them read out loud. You know, set time aside to listen to each student read out loud. So here's a chart from the National Assessment of Educational Progress Fluency Scale. So the scale below focuses on the level of a student demonstrates in phrasing and expression while reading aloud. So this kind of gives you an idea of what level each of your children are, each of your students are in your classroom. So our non-fluent level one reads primarily word by word. Okay, occasionally they'll have two or three word phrases, but more infrequent and they don't preserve meaningful syntax. So they're not getting anything. They're just trying to decode the words. Non-fluent level two is they primarily read in two word phrases with some three or four groupings. Um, some word by word reading is still present and then word, group, word groupings may seem awkward or run, unrelated. And so again, they're just trying to figure out how to blend the words and put it into a sentence. And so they're still not comprehending. Now level three, this is the bottom of the fluent. Okay, level three is where a lot of our kids get in the lower levels, but we try to shoot for that level four. But level three is they read primarily in three or four word phrase groups. Some small groupings may be present. However, the majority of the phrasing seems appropriate and preserves the syntax of the author. Little or no expressive inter interpretation is really present, prevalent or present, okay? so. The difference between level four and level three is really that expressive interpretation where you can see that they're taking the, the, the concepts in the reading, understanding the reading, they understand the vocabulary, but there's really no expression. So they may or may not be comprehending, but they're getting most of the reading parts down. Now level four, this is where we want to get our kids at reads primarily in larger meaningful phrase groups, although some regressions and repetitions and deviations from text may be present, these do not appear to detract from the overall structure of the story. Preservation of the author's syntax is consistent. Some or most of the story is read with expressive interpretation. So this is where that expressive interpretation, they're fluent, they're reading straight through, they're using context clues to understand the vocabulary. And really, this is where we really want them to be. So when you're assessing fluency, formally and informally, here are some of the strategies that we use to assessment, assessment strategies. The most informal way is to listen to a student read aloud and make a judgment about their progress and fluency. Monitoring student progress and reading fluency will help to determine the effectiveness of your instruction and the setting of instructional goals, such as one repeating reading rate. A child reads a text. The teacher counts how many words were read correctly in one minute. The child does a repeated reading of the same text as the teacher charts the progress of the child on the graph. This test for the rate. Now you'll see this a lot in the Dibbles assessments um, and that kind of assessment. Okay, and then the MISQ analysis or running records, this is more of what the teacher keeps a track of, you know, like in a chart and you document each of the child's running records. And there are lots of videos on how to do running records properly, but this is basically what a running record is. So a child is given a passage to read. The teacher has a copy of the same passage. The teacher marks incorrect reading or omission of words, and then this test for the free fluency accuracy. So the, those miscues, are they reading accurately, accurately and the fluency? When reading, when using repeated reading or miscue analysis, teachers rate students overall fluency using an oral reading rubric. Okay, so you need to really know what that rubric is. But this brings us into oral reading fluency and the ORF. And again, ORF is, is widely used across the nation and in many different schools and different types of assessments. Dibbles is just one of those types of assessments. But reading fluency is assessed using oral reading fluency or ORF. 
measures. ORF assessments measure reading rate and accuracy and are expressed in terms of the number of words read correctly per minute or WCPM. Okay, oral reading fluency has consistently been found to have a high correlation with reading comprehension. It is a valid, reliable, and objective measure that can be used to identify students with reading difficulties and also for progress monitoring. ORF is a more accurate measure than teacher judgment. Oral reading fluency assessments are usually quick and simple to administer and score. They are done one-on-one -on -one and take a few minutes per student. The measure is words correct per minute, or CPM. For beginning readers, fluency is best measured by reading lists of single words. Once a threshold score of WCPM has been reached in single word reading, fluency should be assessed using passage reading tests. Okay, so you start with the list of words and then we move into the passages. Now, when we progress monitor using ORF, um, this will show us where our students need more interventions. Okay, so the frequency of assessment depends on the student. For most students, every four to five weeks is sufficient. In the middle and at the end of each school term is best. Student scores should be recorded and evaluated against the relevant benchmarks. Students need to read at a rate of approximately 90 to 100 words correct per minute for basic comprehension. For most students, this should be achieved by the end of year two, which is second grade, okay? Throughout the upper primary years, uh, fluency should typically reach around 100 to 120 words correct per minute and higher again in the secondary school. Skilled adult readers read at approximately 180 words correct per minute, depending on the text, higher for fiction and lower for nonfiction on average. Now, as we do the ORF, well, then we can make some really key intervention decisions on where these kids fall in the tiers, and, and such as um, MTSS or RTI. So students who score are, whose scores are in the lowest 25% of their cohort should be provided with appropriate interventions. Okay, if students low fluency is because they are having difficult with accurate decoding, instruction and phonics will be necessarily necessary until they are reading words automatically. Okay, if their poor fluency is due to the rate of their reading, fluency innovation has been based on the instruction method listed above. For example, repeating readings are recommended. For students who are receiving the intervention and whose progress needs to be closely monitored, Reading fluency assessments can be used as often as once a week. Students who fail to make progress after receiving an evidence-informed base school intervention for no more than two terms should be referred to a speech language or a reading specialist for specialist diagnosis. Now, with your early grades, kindergarten and first grade, be really careful not to quickly assume it's a reading disorder. Um, continue with those, but by the time they're in second grade, if they're still not catching it, that's really when you need to uh, refer them into the school-based intervention program. Now, this classroom frequent fluency strategies, here's a link to the Reading Rock Rockets site, and it has so many different types of fluency strategies that can fit right into your plan. So if you want a great site with a whole list of different types of fluency strategies, Reading Rockets is always the best place to start. So I wanna thank you for joining me um, on this trip through fluency strategies. If you have any questions, please reach out to the Lopes Literacy Channel. Here are the Lopes Literacy Committee. Here's the Lopes Literacy YouTube channel, which is awesome. It's got so many different types of videos and instructional ways to do it and trainings and different things on there. Again, thank you for joining us and I will see you next time.